Okay, I confess. Accordion sketchbooks are an addiction with me. I've made many, um, even though you actually can go on Amazon and for about $10 buy one that's already made. I think they're kind of fun uh, to make um, yourself. And I also, they're very inexpensive because you can use things that you have around the house. And it's kind of fun to say, I made this myself. So I thought today that we would make an accordion sketchbook. And we're going to use a brown paper bag. So the first thing you need to do is find a bag and we're gonna open it up and cut this bag so that you get a nice big flat piece of paper. From that flat piece of paper, you're going to cut a strip as long as you can get out of your um, flat piece of paper. This one happens to be 27 and a half inches long and I made it five inches tall just because uh, there was no magic to that answer. Once you have a strip of paper, you're gonna take that paper and fold it in half and you're gonna fold it in half again and then fold it a third time. Now you have a series of panels that you can use for sketching. You can sketch on a single panel. You can sketch two panels across. That's called a spread, either direction. I've seen some sketchbook artists that do panoramas where they open up the accordion and they sketch across the entire spread of, of panels, whatever calls your name. But that's your first step. Fold once, fold twice, fold three times. Once you've done that, you're going to take that strip of paper and now you need to reverse every other fold. So you have one fold going this way, take that next fold and reverse it. One fold going this way, take the next fold and reverse it. And once you've done that, voila, you have an accordion. You could stop right there. This would make a great little sketchbook. People pay a lot of money for uh, toned paper. In other words, paper doesn't always have to be white to sketch on. And you have a toned paper sketchbook right now. What I like to do though, is I like to add a cover. And <coughs> the first step to the cover is finding some thin, lightweight cardboard. This happens to be from some packaging uh, from a frame. This is uh, cardboard. It's actually from the side of a tissue box. Doesn't have a great pattern. I've used cereal boxes, uh, pasta boxes, whatever gives you a thin piece of cardboard that will give your sketchbook a little more uh, body and make it a little sturdier. Do not use corrugated cardboard. It's just way too thick. So take this, um, what you're gonna do is take this piece of cardboard. Let's look at one that already has a pattern on it. I would not cover that up. I'd put some glue on the back side. Glue one piece to the front. Glue the other piece to the back. And there you go. You have a beautifully covered sketchbook that's just waiting for you to fill it. Sometimes I take the cardboard and I cover it with paper. And I've used all kinds of paper. I've printed paper um, just using bubble wrap and acrylic paint on a piece of copy paper so I've got some crazy patterns. I've used things like, this is the uh, Pasco County Public Transportation map. I might cut that out, that would make a great cover. The cover for this sketchbook actually was a page from one of our local art museums had a flyer out about what they were offering and I just thought the colors were so gorgeous so I used that page to cover a book. This cover was actually um, a Starbucks uh, holiday season bag. So again, don't go out and buy paper. If you have scrapbooking paper, that works great. But what you're going to do to cover your piece of cardboard is cut your paper so that it's about at least a half inch, about three quarters larger than your cardboard. 
load that cardboard up with glue edge to edge, cover the whole thing, and center it as best you can. You don't need to use a ruler on this piece of paper. Give that a good press. All right, And you're going to do the same for the second piece of cardboard. Next step is, once that glue is tacky enough that it, the paper is not going to slide off, take your scissors and you're going to cut off the corner. So let me show you one that I've already done. You want to cut the corner so that you are right up to the point of the cardboard. And you're going to do that on all sides. And then you're going to load up these wings with glue and just fold them over. All right. Now, this is ready. This is ready to glue onto one of the panels of your sketchbook. Do another one for the back cover. All right. After you've gotten to this point when you've added a cover to your sketchbook, I would suggest that you take the whole thing, put it on a flat, firm surface, and put a weight on it, like a gallon of paint, um, a big heavy book, a jug of wine, uh, whatever that will hold that press until that glue is really set. Leave it overnight, and then the next day you're ready for the big reveal because now you'll have a sketchbook that's ready for you to fill with a beautiful cover, lots of panels, panels that you can draw on, sketch on, in whatever manner you see fit. Okay, There's no rules to that. However, a couple of things that you might find helpful that have worked for me. I like to give my sketchbooks a theme. Um, they might be um, we were in, uh, we took a little trip to Key West. All right. So this sketchbook only has things from Key West in it. When you turn it over, it only has things from Havana because that was our particular cruise. So sometimes I'll do a sketchbook around a trip. Sometimes I will do a sketchbook of, um, well, you've seen my porch paintings. Things that, um, things that I see from my porch, and those are the only things that can go in the book. So I like to give my sketchbook a theme. For whatever reason, it seems to keep me focused and I, and I kind of grab it uh, when I'm ready. You might want to make a rule. Um, I do like rules, and so sometimes I'll make a rule that I can only use ink, or I'm only going to use uh, blue. Um, Sometimes the rule, well, my porch paintings book, the rule is it can only be something I see from my chair on the porch. So give it a theme. If rules call your name, make a rule, and you're ready to go. So here's what you need to do. Find something where you can put your new sketchbook um, and some sketching supplies. So I have a fine line Sharpie marker and a few colored pencils, and I think I'm going to leave it at that. And this goes by my chair, and I can grab it whenever um, I'm in the kind of in the mood to sketch. So I hope you will make an accordion sketchbook, and uh, let's go sketch something, and I'll see you real soon.